this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer, not a doubter. I'm a doer, not just a hearer of God's word. My life is the better. After having heard the word of faith, my faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the precious word of God. If you believe that, give God one more praise. Amen. I want you to turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Amen. Luke chapter 16. Hallelujah. We started this year out talking about, or late last year talking about, the fresh fire anointing. We started talking about the fact that God wants to baptize and fill all of us with his Holy Spirit. But then he also wants to refill you over and over and over again. That in this refilling, you'll develop a passion for the things of God. And you won't allow lethargic living to set in and take you off your designated course with God. And so now, if we read the book of Acts, you'll see where... Jesus tells the apostles not to leave Jerusalem till they be endued with power from on high. Acts chapter 2, you see it come in the uh, futation. They are all filled with the Holy Spirit and begin, with speak with, begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. But then if you keep reading, you'll notice that there are times where they were refilled over and over and over again. Well, that refilling was designed to keep them passionately involved in the evangelistic assignment they had for the church so that the church could go to that level that God has created for it and fulfill its purpose and destiny on this planet. And so now, what we did is we started talking about those things, and lo and behold, a fresh fire anointing hit the place. People were healed, set free, and delivered. The Tuesday night Bible study is just off the chain. Well, both the Bible studies on Tuesday are just off the chain, and the power of God is moving like never before. This is truly a year like none other. This is truly a year where your manifested results can take, where manifested results can take place in your life in numerous, let's see how I want to say this, in numerous venues. And so now, what I want to do today is that I'm going to piggyback off what our our, our lesson was a couple weeks ago. I really believe that we're growing and we're growing at a fast, fast rate because of this passion that we have for the loss, and God is getting us ready for the overflow. But now, there are certain areas that we must address. As we address these areas and correct these areas in our lives, then God can tell us that we're mature to handle the more. One of those areas was offense, and we talked about offense for three weeks, about how in the last days the opportunity for offense would, would increase in the body of Christ. And that offense was a satanic trap that was designed by the devil to keep us from unifying and being that united front that the sinner needs to see once they sit in the pews of the church. And so now, I'm going to piggyback off that, and we're going to deal with something else here today. And when it, when, and, and I've noticed that when I get into God's Word, I see the power of what I'm going to talk to you about resonating throughout Scripture. But now, I don't know if this is a shouting message. I don't know. I don't, I don't ever come up with shouting. I don't know. I just, I just know that you're going to have to listen to what I say today because it is life changing. I notice while I read the word that Moses exhibited this quality. And when he exhibited this, this quality, the more he exhibited the quality that I'm going to talk about, the more responsibility he got and the more God used him and the more that was manifested in his life. I saw the same quality in David. How David grew from a shepherd boy, taking care of his father's sheep. Then he goes on the battlefield. He defeats Goliath. And then, all of a sudden, he's ruler of a nation. I saw the same quality in Paul. Paul, who persecuted the church with a fervor, he persecuted the church because he thought he was right. But when the truth was revealed, change took place. The change took place, and this quality was in Paul. And Paul then... Uh, wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. I saw the same quality in Peter. Peter denied Jesus three times. But in John, before Peter goes, before Jesus ascends, uh, ascends into heaven, 
he tells Peter three times, love my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? And Peter said, yes. He said, feed my sheep. And he told him to feed the sheep twice. Then he told him to also tend the sheep. So now this same quality was the quality that God was, was, was resonating in Peter before Jesus ascended. And so now this quality I'm going to talk about today is commitment. What we're going to talk about, say, I ain't getting many amens on that. We're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to help you raise the level of your commitment. See, because until, until you get a revelation of that, you'll never experience maximized manifestation in your life. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good, isn't he? Go to Romans chapter 8. I told you go to Luke. We'll, we'll get there. Go to Romans chapter 8. Yeah, got a whole lot of amens on that one. That was a pretty good intro. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 37, it says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded, this is Paul talking, he says, Now I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able. Shall be able. Everybody say able. able. Shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I really do believe what Paul was talking about here was commitment. That no matter what comes up, no matter what comes my way, no matter the storm, no, 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 no matter the, ter the terrain or the circumstances, I'm not going to give up on God. Amen. 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 God is good. And so now, let's go to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Everybody say commitment. commitment. Repeat this after me. I'm raising, I'm raising the, level the level of my commitment. Amen. Now, what God wants us to do is to raise our level of commitment to him, to our families, and to others. He wants us to raise our level of commitment to him, amen, to others, and to our families. And so now, let's read uh, Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Wow. Wow. He who is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. He who is unjust in that which is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man, who will give you what is your own? Mm -mm -mm. So now, my objective in these lessons, I think it's going to be about several or eight of them. My objective is to stress the importance of serving God through the kingdom assignment of the local church. Now, again, I'm setting us up for increase. I want the people that come here realize that we're a church with purpose, functioning on purpose, and through purpose, achieving purpose. I want them to see Fired up folk. I want them to see people that are living for the Lord. I want to see them, see, see them uh, notice that the people here are serious about their relationships with God. In other words, I don't want your character to pull anybody away from what God wants to do in their life. Okay? Amen? Look at his name and say he's talking to you. And so now, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all his righteousness, and all these things will be added. So now, I have to take on a kingdom mentality before increase comes in my life. Amen. So it can't be about me anymore. It can't be about my naming and claiming everything that God, there ain't nothing wrong with that, but it, 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 it has to be about more than that. It has to be about me living a life and making a commitment to the point where other people see my commitment 
and want to commit to what I'm committed to. God is good. So, raising our commitment is the choice to put forth more deliberate, decisive, determined, and disciplined effort to achieve a predetermined objective. Y'all get that? Okay. Raising our, our commitment is the choice to put forth more deliberate, decisive, determined, and disciplined effort to achieve a predetermined objective. Now, what we're talking about here, listen to this, what we're talking about here is increased effort in the kingdom. That's what I'm talking about, increased effort in the kingdom. Now, if I increase my effort in the kingdom, it's going to affect my relationship with God. It's going to affect my relationship with others. And it's going to affect my ministry with the Lord. Those three things. If, if, if I put up an increased effort, it's going to affect some areas in my life. Um, and it's going to be to your good. God is good. Now, where there is a desire for great output and effort, the raising of one's commitment will be automatic. What am I saying? Okay, if, if I have a call that I'm sold to, Commitment is automatic. If I'm sold out for Jesus, my commitment is automatic. Right? If I'm sold out to the Lord, my commitment can be counted on. All right. Luke 6.38. Luke 6.38. Now, if you notice what, what's been going on, the Holy Spirit is this. The Holy Spirit has been restructuring the mindsets of the folk in the church. First, he told us we need to deal with, with offense. Well, number one, he told us we need this fresh fire anointing. We need our passion back. Number two, then, we got to beware of offense. And now, he wants to raise our level of commitment. So the Holy Spirit is telling us something. He's telling us what's needed for maximum manifestation across the entire board in your life. And I don't know about you, but I want my prayers answered. Yes. I want the best that God has for me. And I will not settle for less. Yes. Amen. Yes. So then, I've developed a passion for the Lord. I've developed a passion for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I've developed a passion to fulfill my purpose and destiny in my life. Because my purpose and destiny fulfilled includes you. All right. God is good. Luke chapter 6. Huh, We're going to go to verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall uh, be put into your bosom. Now, that's not what I'm talking about right now. But this last part is. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Huh. The same measure that I use will be measured back to me. God's commitment to me cannot rise above my commitment to him. I'm going to say it again. God's commitment to me cannot rise above my commitment to him. Next week on Walking by Faith. And you know, this is for me. This is one for me. Uh, Am I right before God in the way I am dealing with my spouse, my family, or am I just using my leverage? I'm the man. Huh. But if you got to say that, then maybe they're not convinced you are. <laughs> and now, back to our broadcast. If I'm not committed to him, he can't be committed to me. God is good. The way I measure it out is the way I can expect it to come back to me. The way you measure it out is the way you can expect it to come back to you. So then, if that's the case, what has your commitment been like with God? Okay, now then, you have an answer as to why everything is so hard. If your commitment to him 
has not matched his commitment to you or your commi- his commitment to you cannot match your, your, his commi- uh, your commitment to him. Meditate on it, shall I? Okay, because uh, uh, let's face it. We all got questions. Okay, how come God going to allow this to happen in my life? Well, it goes back to your commitment to him. That's part of it. How committed have we been to him? All right. Okay. Now, this justifies the level of expectation I have in dealing with God. That whatever I put in it, I can't expect any more than that, what I put in it to come out of it. So now, that helps me with my level of expectation when I'm dealing with God. Because if I'm never there for him, then I can't expect him to always be there for me. All right, God is good. You must increase your commitment to God, to your family, okay? God, your family, and others. Because again, it ain't all about you. Look at your name and say, it ain't all about you. Now ask him, what's your problem? Amen. So now, in life, we know that extra effort tends to pay off. I mean, when you put extra effort into your relationship with your husband and wife or wife, it's going to pay off. If you put extra effort in your job, it'll pay off. And in, 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 in this natural world, when people see that you're putting in an extra effort, then you're always rewarded. Am I right? And so now, listen this very carefully, even the casual student of human behavior knows that if the effort is there, it's got to pay off. Mm. All right. Now, if I increase my focus on the thing, It'll increase my effort. Then it's got to yield something for me. Whatever I focus on and give my all to, it has to yield something in my life. If it's a godsend, it has to yield something in your life. And that's what we're going to talk about here today, raising your level of commitment. Because if my commitment level goes up, maximize expectation and manifestation is my reward. And if you want more from God, God requires a little bit more from you than what he's been getting. All right, God is good. Now, to help you along in that, Job uh, 36, verse 11. Now, there, I'm going to share with you now God's equation for kingdom success. God's equation for kingdom success. Whatever you want from God is available for you, but God has an equation that must, where every variable must be satisfied. It says in Job 36, verse 11, listen to this, if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures is plural, right? If they obey and serve him, They'll live their days in and their years in pleasures. Now, listen to me very carefully, because we kind of overlook this, because we like the pleasures and the prosperity. But listen to this very carefully. Serving God is part of the equation God has for kingdom success. If you obey and what? Stop. If you obey and, if you obey and, if you obey in, if you obey in, huh? So serving is a part of the equation for God to successfully do for you what you need done in your life. Say praise the Lord. I must give of myself. I must give of my substance. Well, why substance? Why money? Why substance? Because God says your heart is tied to what you give. 
but now I must give of my service. Yeah. I must give of my service. And the problem is, we got to get we got to get educated to that. We got to get educated to that because we're not quite there as a whole. Okay, God is good. So now, in these next seven weeks, I got some goals. Now, goals are measurable objectives. And I got some goals, and I'm going to share some of the goals, you, goals with you as we go along in this. But my main goal here is to get you to the point where you maximize your service, maximize your service to the Lord, and see God maximize results back to your life. That's what I want. I want you to have the best God has for you. I want you to be the head, not the tail, above, not beneath. Have a joyful, have a meaningful, fulfilled relationship. And your kids are prosperous and growing. Grandkids, too. I, know, I mean, I know we, we talk about going to heaven. We're going there. See, but God has a plan in his word whereby you can have some of that here. We just got to get you to believe it. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to who? Him who does what? I just got to get you to believe it. Oh, God is good. Huh. So if I was going to subtitle this lesson, here's what I would call it. Establish, establishing, establishing a raised kingdom consciousness. That's what I would call it. Because what I'm trying to do now is get you kingdom conscious and not so conscious about what you need. Because see, he said, if you take care of mine, I'll take care of yours. So I got to get you to think more kingdom and less about, oh, I need a job and less about, you know, all this other stuff. And if I can get you wrapped up in because he said, if I be lifted up, Okay, God is good. So now, Joshua uh, 24, verse 24. Joshua chapter 24, verse 24. See, it th raised kingdom commitment will mess with every part of your life. Having a raised kingdom commitment would deal with every other part of your life. God is good. See, one thing that a raised kingdom commitment would do, Thurman, is that it develops a better character. See, I think sometimes we think our characters are compartmentalized. In other words, that character is good over here, but it's not that good over here. But if I commit to a kingdom consciousness, my character will be affected across the board. God is good. Joshua 24, verse 24. It says, and the people said to Joshua, the Lord our God, we will serve. And his voice we will obey. Now, think about it. So then, I can obey him and not serve him. Think about it. Meditate on Shalom. I can obey him and yet not serve him. And that messes with my kingdom results. And look, I'm not talking about being a busy church. I don't want a busy church. Now you got to understand where I say that, and I'll just explain it. A busy church is busy doing everything and accomplishing nothing. That's what I call a busy church. But I want a purpose-driven church. When whatever, when whatever we purpose, it's fulfilled. And glorifies him, not us. God is good. So now for the next few minutes, I got 20 minutes. What I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about four things. Number one, I'm going to talk about the raised kingdom defined. I'm going to define it for you. Number two, I'm going to talk about the raised kingdom commitment deter deterrence. What can deter me from uh, developing a kingdom consciousness? 
Number three, I'm going to talk about a raised kingdom commitment desire. How do, how do I get the desire for a kingdom consciousness? Then last but not least, I'm going to talk about the raised kingdom commitment discovery. Man, there's a whole lot of benefits that are ascribed to you when you get kingdom minded. Amen. God is good. All right. First one we're going to talk about is the raised kingdom commitment defined. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Now remember the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of what? And all his and all these will be what? So God is telling us that if we seek just the kingdom, seek the kingdom, everything we need will be taken care of. If we can just seek the kingdom. Get this thing right. We're serving God, not man. Get this thing right, and God says, I'll take care of all the rest. Now, I don't know about you, but there's a good feeling attached to knowing that God is going to take care of all of your rest. But let's face it. Upcoming events at New Covenant Christian Center.